to everybody from the world of social distance. I'm going to do a brief reading from the hard rain, America in the 1960s. Uh, it's an episode from December of 1968 about the Apollo 8 astronauts who went to the moon and did not land but left us something priceless. It took three days to get to the moon where the spacecraft immediately went into orbit circling the dark side, in which no communication was possible. The silence lasted 34 minutes. When the module finally emerged to cheers from the NASA ground crew, the three astronauts witnessed a sight no human had ever beheld, an Earth rise. There was their planet, some 40% of it still in shadow, the rest nearly heartbreaking in its beauty, blue and fragile and covered with clouds floating alone against the darkness of space. It was then that the Apollo crew began to read. For all the people on Earth, said William Anders, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message we would like to send you. When he finished the first four verses of Genesis, Jim Lovell continued, and God called the, the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Back on Earth, we listened spellbound, for it was Christmas Eve, and nobody had ever told the story this way. From 250,000 miles away, with the black and white image of our planet on the screen. When Lovell paused, Frank Borman, the stocky crew cut commander of the mission, brought the reading to a close. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear and it was so. When the mission ended after 10 lunar orbits and Apollo 8 returned safely to Earth, Madeline Murray O'Hare, founder of a group called American Atheists, sued the U.S. government for violating her First Amendment rights. In effect, she said, these Bible reading astronauts as representatives of the state had established an official religion for the country. The Supreme Court dismissed her suit most of us could not have cared less, for we were still in awe, transfixed now by a color photograph taken by Anders, far more dramatic than the black and white image on TV. Galen Rowell, a young Californian who soon became an award-winning National Geographic photographer, called Earthrise the most influential environmental photograph ever taken. What Rowell understood was that the photo became the ultimate illustration of a new force in America, a rising environmental consciousness that was on its way to becoming a movement. In 1968, much of it was cultural, reflected, for example, in the writings of poets like Wendell Berry, a Kentuckian who worked a family farm while publishing novels, essays, and poetry. That same year, in openings, his latest book of verse, he published a poem called A Piece of Wild Things, reflecting on the lessons to be learned from nature, the incredible interdependence of humankind and the natural world, which we seem to regard as a lesser creation. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drove, rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. And the cameo appearance, by the way, was Sam, who lives next door. We were happy to have him play a little role. All right, stay safe, everybody.